asking people to bring their gold and to open uh, go, uh, open a gold account. But when you bring uh, do, when you do this, uh, you sign a paper saying that you are uh, you are not able to take your back uh, take back your gold in a phys- in a physical way. The, you can only receive it with worthless paper fiat currency. You know this is they, this is incredible. I am so happy and pleased to be able to present to you Hamza that comes all the way to us from Turkey, which currently is experiencing yet another financial crisis. He has studied economics and he's a researcher. He's written a whole bunch of books on astronomy and religious history, but he's also a documentarist. He's translated three books from English to Turkish. He's worked as a scriptwriter, an editor, producer. So he really has a very well-trained eye. And I think it's really important for us to have this wonderful opportunity. I can't even tell you how much I appreciate this because we need to understand what's going on. He's broadcast a lot of his work on TV channels like the Discovery Channel, National Geographic, Al Jazeera, TVNet, Sin5, uh, TRT, and many more. So without further ado, I am so happy and pleased to introduce you to Hamza. And I'm just not using his last name simply because I'm afraid I would butcher it. Hi, Linet. Oh, okay, hello. thank thank you so much for this beautiful introduction, and and thank you for having me. Oh, I thank you so much for being here, because as you know, we're inside of a global monetary reset, and typically, when a government gets over indebted, what they do is they destroy the value of the currencies. And a lot of people will look, oh, well, that's Turkey, or oh, well, that's Venezuela. But uh, your country's been here before with that, yes? Yes, of course. Uh, It happened many times back in in history. When you look back in past, you you see the politicians do the same stupid mistakes over and over again. And you have these cycles, and you can predict what is actually coming. Uh, I have some charts and, uh, and and data right here, but first of all, I, I want to tell you that why Turkey is so uh, Turkish economy is so important in terms of the global um, economy. Uh, you know why? Because um, if the Turkish banks fail, then the Italian banks will be in a very uh, difficult, a risky situation, and this. The, the failure of the Italian banks might trigger a collapse, a potential collapse of the European economy, which will mm-hmm. might trigger the whole global. You know, it's like a it's a domino effect, right? Exactly. And this is why why we are here um, uh, at the important, just like a center of of um, earthquake, right? You know. So you know that brings up the point because I agree with you. It's contagion. We've gone to a globalized economy where all of the banks and the large corporations, multinationals, are completely enmeshed with each other. And that's really the biggest issue. Yeah. But, I'm sorry, I was going to say, with, with all of that history, um, you know, have you noticed for you personally since you saw or since you've had that history, what is it that you saw and when did you see it again to indicate that you were running into the same kind of trouble that you've experienced in the past? Yeah, we have lots of indicators, but uh, I I believe that the most important thing right here happening now is the politicians are sweeping uh, as uh, sweeping the economic facts under the carpet just because of the just because of the upcoming municipal elections uh, going to take place in March uh, uh, 29, um, 2019, next year, you know, mm-hmm. we have a very few months um, uh, for for these municipal elections. So 
they do they don't want people to know actually what's what we're going to face the politicians um uh, sweeping all these facts under the carpet just because of the elections and mm-hmm. and after that they will have to they um um declare some economic precautions precaution acts like um fixing the budget deficits freezing the public investments and probably bailouts as well and rising tax rates and uh, sustaining local currency which also means uh, rising interest rates and uh, currently shrinking the economy things like this when when the uh, government has to declare all these things then we will see the next day you know uh, uh, the huge crisis just like it happened in 1958 and 1994 uh, let me give give you some numbers uh, in 1958, uh, the Economic Precautions Act, which is called moratorium, was declared. One dollar was uh, two liras at that time, and the day after, one dollar became nine liras. You can can you see the uh, devaluation and things like this happened in, for example, 1994, uh, and just after declaring all these um, all these acts. Then the the four hundred percent of um, devaluation, uh, inflation, sorry, happened, which which is a hi- hyperinflation in two thousand and one, the act of twenty first February, things like this. I can give you lots of many many numbers, and this is what we are ha- actually having uh, experiencing now. The same thing again. Can I can I ask you though, <clears throat> when they do that overnight devaluation? Was there no inflation or just a teeny bit? Like, did you notice any inflation in the cost of, you know, food and rent and medicine and, you know, all of those day-to-day things? Was it bam overnight or was there something that led up to that? Um, That that you would have, that you, the normal person on the ground would have felt wages, those those kinds of things. It takes a little bit, a, a little some time, you know. Maybe one week, one month. It depends on on the uh, conditions, the heaviness of the uh, of the facts. Like, but Turkey is a country which has to import goods uh, from abroad. Mm-hmm. Be, even if you produce uh, in, uh, industrial goods, you need to buy a crude material uh, from abroad. So. When when the money is a Turkish currency is devaluated, so you uh, all the uh, prices of the all all kind of properties rise in, in a very short time. This is so linked to each other. The the um, the value of uh, foreign currencies against Turkish currency, and the price of the uh, of the consumer goods. Okay, so so you did feel. Are you feeling some inflation now, even before the the elections? Your cost, you know. When I looked at what happened with uh, the debt levels held everywhere and the inflation, you know, even if they yeah. even if they declare an overnight devaluation, I mean, at this juncture, it at least from the perspective of say trading economics, is which is where I pulled the data from. It already looks yes. like you're experiencing a nice bout of inflation in the cost of food and and all of that. Yes. Uh, now uh, the the officials um, the officials announced a 21 percent inflation rate, but but the real inflation the the fact is looks like much much um, different than when it is declared. Right. And this inflation is uh, totally based on the devaluation of the Tur- of Turkish currency lira against dollar and, and the other currencies. Uh, let me give you some numbers. I mean, t- just two years ago, one dollar uh, was one dollar was uh, three liras or, or even less than three liras mm-hmm. in in the in the year in the year 2016, but but now it is 5.35 liras. One dollars, 5.35 liras. This 
a tremendous amount of uh, increase, of course, um, affect the prices of consumer goods and also services. Exactly. But it, it takes a little bit uh, uh, more time to affect uh, the inflation. But eventually, uh, this is what it, what ha what it happens. Mm -hmm. And and since you've you know the other the other piece, and people ask me this all the time, they always want to know what happens to real estate. So to... real estate. So um, we know that in Turkey, there has been, uh, for a period of time now, a push and the availability for the average person to take on a mortgage and, and buy real estate, right? And yes. Uh, the cost of real estate, like iron and cement and all these other goods, are uh, priced in dollars in global markets, you know. When the, when the dollar... Uh, increase uh, against Turkish lira, so then you have to buy all these materials more expensively. So this this has increased the cost. This is a fact. But uh, in the recent years, especially uh, in, to, in this year, then 2018, um, the the house sales are very stable. People don't want to buy any house. Uh, they they don't want to because the uh, the the rates are very high, the credit rates for for buying house. What, how, how much do you know what your uh, rates are if somebody's going to take out a mortgage in uh, Turkey today? Yes, yeah, I, uh, it is over uh, twenty one uh, percent. Yes, this is wow. this is what the central <laughs> bank uh, declared, but uh, the other banks, the private banks, apply more of that, more than, more than that. So this is why people don't want to buy uh, houses. So in the real estate market is in a recession, but we we can also see, you know, uh, the um, growth rates are you know are announced every uh, quarter, every quarter year. I mean, four mm -hmm. times a year. Mm -hmm. So, uh, the third quarter of this year was, I have the numbers, growth rate, yeah, it is 1.6, and, and in the second quarter, it was 5.3, and, and the That's first quarter, it was 7.2, you know, and right now, and the, re the numbers will be announced in March, Nobody knows what's happening, uh, what happened in the fourth quarter of this year, but the economists and um, people are uh, predicting a negative and uh, minus three percent of growth rate. You know what this means? Of course you do. This this means recession, Lynette. Right, right, uh, and yeah. that that is and, a global and, issue. But you know, I was reading, um, so I want to get your because you know it's one thing for me to be sitting here in Phoenix, Arizona and reading about what's happening in Turkey. It's another thing for you to be uh, living through it. That's why this is so important. But one of the things that I read was because of the plunge in the lira against the other currencies. And there's another thing I wanna come back to about that. But uh, because of that, a lot of foreigners have gone in the real estate in Turkey in terms of, of the other currencies have plummeted. And so foreigners are coming in and buying up a lot of property, which yes. could be aside from the cost of goods on new construction, but is kind of uh, helping support that market at the moment. Yes, this is correct. Uh, the people who are buying, in, uh, buying houses in Turkey are mostly Arabs. Uh, they are especially come from the Arabic, uh, Arabic countries, and mm -hmm. people don't are not ma making new buildings because there are lots of lots of uh, empty houses which which are being uh, which are waiting to be sold, and the only uh, the most um, most people buying buying them are the the foreigners. That's that's right, and so currently the prices are not going up. You know, mm -hmm. the, mm -hmm. even even if the house owner uh, are selling their flats or houses, decrease the the price, the, uh, but they are still not able to sell them um, 
rapidly. So they they have even they maybe sometimes wait for three months, six six uh, six months, maybe one year, and they cannot find buyers. See, that's the thing. It's it's a pricing mismatch because I don't know this for sure. So this is just. Uh, this is just a thought of mine, so please, please correct me if I'm wrong. But as the emerging market uh, fiat money products have evolved, I wonder how many of those Turkish mortgages made it into those, you know, global REITs that are now feeling that downward pressure. And if it's inside of a, a an emerging market ETF, well, at least at the moment, you can sell that ETF whenever you want. But how long is it going to take to sell the underlying asset that's inside of it? it there's a uh, liquidity mismatch that's happened as Wall Street and the big banks have converted all of the tangible assets into fiat money intangible products that they can trade and do all sorts of things and they make lots of fees on it and they trans and they use it to transfer the risk but are you noticing a default rate spike uh, because of, you know, like salaries. Well, what's happened to people's salaries and incomes? Are, are they keeping pace? If they have money, I have um, salary more than uh, they uh, spend. They buy dollars, you know, because if, if they think that if a financial crisis happens uh, because, uh, while all these um, the rates are so high, so after that, financial shock the house prices might go down rapidly and also the prices of other stuff so people will have to sell them cheaper and if they hold they're holding dollars or gold or any other stuff so they can sell it and buy it later so this is like like people feeling to protect themselves and they're um, not tended to spends more money uh, and but this is all this is uh, only for those who have their uh, money uh, they which they can um, they can accumulate you know because the wages are so low so people all the they all spend all the money they make for living like buying foods and paying their rents all this kind of stuff. Have they instituted rent control yet? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We have instituted uh, rent uh, rent control, uh, so the landlords cannot uh, are not able to raise their rates as much as they want. Yes, yeah. we have. So it's rates. it's really interesting when you watch this evolve because a lot of people, and I want to come back to something that you said in a second. I want. I want to. I want. To yeah. give you an astonishing um, an example, you know, okay. I I made a research while I was uh, writing this book, Masters and Slaves. Uh, oh, this is in wonderful. English, and also, this is also in Turkish. One. We'll, we'll put the links and the, for all of this below for everybody. 1965, an average worker, and the example here is is a teacher, a school teacher, was able to buy. 27 pieces of Republican gold coins with this one month salary. You know how much, how many pieces of them uh, he can buy now? Not even three. Yeah. Two and a half. Yeah. 27 pieces in 1965. This is, this shows how the uh, inflation and the losing the purchasing power during this time go, goes so much uh, low levels. Today, you yes. know, I made a calculation and uh, about finding the real value of gold and silver. I have these numbers. Uh, I can. I want to briefly tell you about it. The, you know, the, when you calculate the uh, value of the um, of gold and silver in classical method, uh, which was which have uh, applied during the whole history until 1971, it was. Uh, let, let me give you this example. The U.S. monetary base is it is two point um, four 
uh, trillion dollars, and the U.S. Uh, official gold reserve is eight thousand tons. So this means eight thousand ton tons of gold worth uh, two point four trillion dollars. Approximately one ounce, uh, uh, ounce of gold uh, real value is um, more than thirteen thousand dollars. Yes, I'm not talking about the price; just talking about the re real value. Correct. And when you, yeah, yeah, when you ca when you calculate the uh, silver price, when you uh, calculate with twelve ratio, it is six thousand dollars. You know, one ounce of silver, but it is sold for fourteen and a half dollars right now. That's why I'm so, buying so a lot of both. <laughs> yeah. Right. So because that's actually how they do the reset. And in Turkey, having, um, I'm glad that you brought this up because I wanted to uh, follow up on the comment that you made. Since people that live in Turkey are so used to, unfortunately, they've lived through currency crisis before. What's their relationship with gold and how does the government relate to that relationship? Now Turkey and Russia and China and India and Hungary and many other countries are going for gold. You, you know this very well. So the, some, can they can you see as something. An individual, is, can you as an individual yes, buy uh, gold yeah, in Turkey? Uh, uh, yes, I, I, yeah, I do. I do. I'm trying to accumulate some uh, uh, precious metals to protect my, my myself when this uh, upcoming crisis or the, the collapse of the monetary system, because it's a transition process. It's not right. like, it's not a normal, not an average crisis. It's, it's, it's different than the previous ones. It, it's, it is actually, this is what I, what I believe, uh, the end of the system, of the end of the monetary system, which has, has been operating uh, about uh, nearly 50 years. So, it's going to be something big, and all these countries, like which I just uh, mentioned their names, you can see what China, this Russia. something's mm -hmm. com coming, and they're uh, making uh, taking precautions. This is what they're doing. It actually, uh, just to kind of add a little bit on to that, as far as the third quarter of 2018, according to the World Gold Council that what, aside from the fact that central banks are buying gold at the highest level that they have since 2015, when the current currency peg system began to break down, it is uh, the broadening base of buyer of those central banks. So more countries' central banks are buying gold. Are you noticing uh, the normal, well, maybe not the average person, but like in India, who's also lived through it many times, they wear their gold, they carry their wealth. And so the Indian government and central bank has been trying for many years to dematerialize it and get people yes. to deposit that and uh, the gold in the banking system so that they can use it. So I'm wondering what's happening in Turkey um, as, I mean, are we seeing something similar or is it yeah, really yeah, different? Yeah. It, there is a tradition, like a culture in, in Turkey for women wearing uh, gold brightness and all this kind of jewelry, just like in India. This is a mm -hmm. culture mm -hmm. uh, coming from many um, hundreds hundreds of years ago. And uh, state banks, I mean, like uh, public banks doing, mm -hmm. they are asking people to bring their goals to open gold accounts, you know? They are now collecting gold from everybody in, in, in Turkey. Some, but a small portion of the uh, society are, are taking their uh, gold to the banks for opening gold account, but m most of them are, uh, are not, not doing this because they are, they they want to f keep it. They want to feel safe, because this is this is a tradition. Uh, this is the advantage of Turkey, the, just like India, just like India. But I, I think uh, you don't have this kind of traditions in the in, in the United States. But this Eastern country is a little bit different from from that. Because exactly, and that's why I brought that up. So, so people, boots on the ground, people that are living through this 
are not likely to give up their gold. It's why you see me wear um, jewelry, and I'm so much about that, because like physical gold coins, they are real wealth that is easy to move, right? They're portable. You, you can't take, take a piece of real estate on your back and move anywhere else yeah. with it. It's not possible. But you could do that with jewelry. You can do that with coins, chains, etc. So I think it's it's quite telling, especially, you know, countries that have lived through the devaluation and the overreach of the government. Yeah, right? they they also um, collected tons of golds uh, in in the few uh, in the recent years and uh, this year and and last year uh, mm -hmm. by this method, asking people to bring their gold and to open uh, go, uh, open a gold account but when you bring uh, do, when you do this uh, you sign a paper saying that you are uh, you are not able to take your back uh, take back your gold in a phys in a physical way that you can only receive it with worthless paper fiat currency you know this is this is incredible something i, I don't know how to describe it Desperate governments do desperate things, and they one thing they count on is that people have very short memories. But what I'm hearing from you is that, and and India is experiencing the same thing, where people they they are they already know that if they do that, what they get back is fiat, and you could have a trillion of fiat, but if it has zero value, it's just worthless. Not even pieces of paper, you know, um, digits. And so that's what they're fighting uh, about. Uh, but I am curious, if it's getting more challenging for the normal person to meet their cost of living, are you seeing a growth of barterability uh, where people are bartering amongst each other? Like, I have this skill for that. No, no, we don't have this kind of thing in Turkey, I'm afraid. But... But people should um, should gain their vulnerabilities, as you uh, oftenly mention. I, I believe this is important. But when the day that day comes, uh, when the paper currency is just worth wor uh, our worthless paper, people need uh, will do need to uh, have these abilities. But it seems really scary, Lynette. It's scary. I, it is very scary. And I think what we're actually with, I mean, first of all, we are living through history that I, you know, it may not be seen again till our grandchildren's grandchildren's grandchildren. But what I think we're also witnessing right now, I've been listening to this and I'm hearing, now we, we've had the populist movement come in uh, since 2008 and on a global basis. But uh, what governments and central banks fear is the loss of confidence in their system and in them. And when I was listening, uh, when I was driving up here this morning, I'm really starting to hear big rumblings from mainstream media, so Wall Street, you know, talking heads, about the global law, the escalation in the global loss of confidence. So, yeah. you know, you know, uh, when I wrote this book, I, I, I wrote on the cover as a motto, the truth will set you free here. You know why I put it put it here? Because just uh, like Jesus Christ once said, you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. Because I believe this is the this is a slavery system, global slavery system. And it is so heavy and the most, uh, the, the worst thing about about this slavery system is people don't know that they are slaves. They are not aware of what they are. You know, if if people know the truth that the truth that they are slaves and how this system work, this is the truth, and it will p ma make people set f uh, people free. The, right. Be yeah. and, and that's really what our big community really is about and, and growing community 
I, I agree with that, as you know, a bazillion percent, because if people understand what they have in mind and they're aware of it, well, then they can't get away with it at e as easily. They need us just to cooperate and go along. That's why, I mean, I seriously have the sense, and this is something that I always track, that enough risk has now been transferred from the elite, from the corporations, the private corporations, to the few, to the public. And they need a big crisis to scare, pardon me, but to scare the crap out of everybody so that they go, whatever, save us, save us, save us. And they just accept what they have in mind for us, which is a lot heavier than what we had before. And like you were saying, that they're trying to get people, which is pretty typical in these governments, that they've been successful in this government in the U.S., to get people to think that gold has no value, it's just an old relic, the why are they massively accumulating it, right? So do what I say and not what I do. And then what you ultimately have are, you know, is slavery. I mean, if you're indebted, you know, if you owe if you owe a hundred thousand dollars, well, then you have a problem. If you own a tr if you owe a trillion dollars, then whoever loaned you that money has a problem. And that's where we're at right now is that there's so much unpayable debt that they have to yeah. reset the system. Debt makes people slave. This is the most important instrument of slavery: debt. Yes. And and the money all over the world, the fiat fiat currency is based on debt uh, so all all of us every single person on the planet are using this worthless fiat paper which means debt and this means we are all the slaves of the system you know and by the way i want to tell you that i i was on tv well hundreds of times in turkey I was speaking turkish but this is this is the first time i'm speaking english uh, on, in front of the camera this is why i'm a little bit excited and this is why I cannot Thank express you. myself very well, maybe because oh, previously I, I was just right like, um, you know, and and this, I wanted to express this. What do you think that people should be doing? I mean, do, I know. Do you see this as a global issue? Absolutely. This is this is global, you know. All the all the uh, wheels of the system linked to each other. And just like I said in the beginning of my speech, the, the Turkey was the first stone of the domino uh, series, like you know, and and the, this the world needs a drop of any stone. It, it might not be Turkey. Just any any country right. can can be. Uh, it's, it's about be possible, but we are going to see something, you know, because we have all these cycles. They are happening again, over and over again. So we, this means, and it will happen because they have got the um, what, what do you call it? The uh, I cannot remember the word. Uh, sorry, sorry. Uh, uh, it, it's just re the repetition of the cycle yeah. over and over again because politicians and and more than that. I mean. This is just my opinion. I can't actually prove it, although I've looked at enough laws to believe this to be true. Uh, that whoever whoever controls the money controls everything else. And from what I've seen, government's primary function is to legalize the theft of the central banks. Sorry, yes. but you know I've done yeah. enough studies on the laws, and and especially yeah. look at how the law is named. It's just the opposite. When they say consumer protection, it's just the opposite. Right? Yes, absolutely. And, you know there are eighty million people in Turkey. The population is the population is eighty million. M more than thirty million are on their on loan credit debts. And more than 3 million people are not able to pay back their credits and they are on court. Can you imagine 
how big number? Three million in eight million population. This is what we're facing now. I, I don't wow. have the exact numbers in the, in the United States, but this is what is happening in here. Default. Yeah. Um, interesting. This is kind of a teeny weeny bit off the topic, but not really, because Turkey and Venezuela were using gold to settle out the trade when the U.S. placed uh, embargoes and restrictions um, against, actually, I think, both countries. So, you know, governments know that gold is private outside of the system. You know, do you have any thoughts or, or uh, uh, opinions or the impact of that choice? Yes. Um, you know, uh, the dominant currency in the world is U.S. dollars, mm -hmm. and it and it takes its power from oil, is mm -hmm. it, which is it is called pe petrodollar system. Yes, you know, it's this Kissinger's uh, project and worked very well during yes. the, this whole time. But today we have there is a very different world. The con conjuncture is is v v much. Uh, much different than uh, than the past. Now people are talking about the oil-free energy. You know, mm -hmm. how can you talk about uh, petrodollar domination when, uh, in in a world in a in a oil-free energy world? Or, you know, China has oil contracts and also gold count contracts. Uh, Russia also doing the same things. Uh, the United States is not as as powerful as it mm -hmm. was in in the past. If it was back in sixties, seventies, eighties, you know, right. the world has, has changed very, very very much, and we are in a really serious transition process. There will be huge, uh, tremendous amounts of the uh, the power uh, is shifting. From Power the West, yeah. from the U.S. to the East, to China. And China yeah. has been actually, haven't they been pretty aggressive in Turkey as far as, you know, funding and getting in there and creating relationship and, yes. and creating debt with the country? And a lot of times what China has been doing is they've been doing it with strategic assets, including oil, as you mentioned, because oil is still, they may be looking at, you know, transportation or oil-free energy, but that's still a ways away. Uh, but China's been going in and really creating relationship with all natural resource companies all over the world and funding lots and lots of debt that what happens when these corporations or these governments cannot repay that debt? And they get the yes. underlying asset, don't they? Yes, it's a very, very big question, and no, there's no answer for this. No, nobody uh, to to save them. You well, know? it goes back to that. Uh, it goes back to that power transfer, because if China now owns a lot of these major uh, resource companies. The, the underlying tangible now they control in all these different parts of the world, what kind of leverage does that give China? A lot, yeah. you know. So do you have, can you uh, look out and look in your crystal ball a little bit? Uh, and do you th see things getting worse? And, and what do you think that people should be doing or the repercussions of not paying attention to what we're trying to show them today yeah i believe there will be two options in front of the people of the world when this reset uh, comes and happens the the one option is absolute slavery uh, if if people go uh, get shifts into a new monetary system in, in a uh, centralized uh, digital monetary system. Oh. It is absolute slavery, and the and the second option is freedom. Well, if if people shift to a decentralized monetary system in the world, so it will be a big um, exam for the people 
and we will see what's going to happen when this comes maybe maybe next year i believe it would, it would not uh, be um in, in far future it's it's very near yeah. i i guess maybe one year maybe two uh, but i don't i don't think more than that the yeah. the visibility of the reset it, i i mean i'm 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 thinking it has already begun that visibility and that loss of confidence and i'm watching keenly right now the numbers on the volumes because globally these markets have been imploding simply from their own weight they're severely overvalued and so buyers have not been showing up and the markets are imploding but last week i noticed that the volume has begun to increase and when we get this big influx of selling that's when i think it'll become visible to the world the the number of the derivatives all over the world is four, four or five times more at least five four or five times more than the complete assets in the world like houses cars and factories and stuff consumer anything the all the real assets in the world so if you if you sell the world five times you, you are still not able to pay this back uh, debt back uh, of, of the derivatives you know and the, what what we uh, what the people in the world do need right now is is a gold um, backed gold backed digital or current uh, crypto current uh, currency uh, system but it, uh, a decentralized one but vice versa the uh, the global um, capital uh, elite is trying to fix another one which is a centralized one this is the IMF and is they are talking about SDR mm -hmm. so this is why I, I, I said there are two options absolute slavery or freedom so the, the peoples of the world will have to make a choice just like the uh, uh, red pill or the blue pill as Mo right, Morpheus right. offered to Neo some things uh, I think it would be something like that yes I, I would agree personally it sounds like you're accumulating physical metals gold and silver yeah. are you doing anything with food water energy and security as well yeah and, and I, I want to make a prediction uh, I don't know what, uh, when I don't know the exact date of course but just just um, the prediction um in april uh, the in the year uh, 2019 after the march after march maybe in april in in the in the spring of next year we might see something big in the world and it might be two waves two shock waves you know just like um we which we can give examples from back in history but I believe that will be two shock waves, but there will be some uh, time period between these two. And well, the first one, one could might be, be the Brexit. Very soon. Were you thinking of the Brexit? Because they're they're leaving. It appears that they are leaving the union without those financial contracts, which is going to threaten all of. I mean, it's it's you know, it'll be an interesting. Yes, thing, it is. But I don't know, but it's possible. It's possible. Yeah. Well, it's it's yeah, they were they were talking, you know, this morning that it looks like there's going to be a no deal Brexit. You know, it's like all of these tests are going around. You know, we're going to test this no deal Brexit with the derivatives. We've got to change all of these contracts, these derivative contracts that are tied to the LIBOR, you know, the interest rate. So we have to create this new market and reset all of these or restructure all of these contracts. Yeah, I think by this spring, I think we will see some huge, huge fireworks. And I think that's what these markets are, are trying to, to tell us now. It was so uh, it's real pleasure talking to you. Thank you for uh, it was 
I really enjoyed this conversation, Lynette. Oh, me too. And I loved it when I was on your TV show just a couple yes, of months ago. Yes, you were ago. on my TV show. I was asking the question. It was so easy for me, asking the question, <laughs> and you were answering. But this time it's very <laughs> different. It was, it was difficult. Uh, but oh. it was uh, lovely. I enjoyed it. You did a great job. And I'm hoping that we can touch base with you down the road as this trend evolves. And okay. is there anything else that you would like to say before we sign off today? Uh, thank you so much. And uh, people should uh, should uh, educate themselves, and they have they should try to understand what the system works, what the monitors how the, how it works, and when when they see the truth, they can be able to prepare themselves. They can uh, what what they are able to do, and choose freedom. Right, because and what choose, we know, yes, choose, definitely choose uh, freedom. Choose freedom. Choose freedom for yourself. I'm choosing freedom for my family, my children, for everybody's children. I absolutely agree. It is food, water, energy, yep. security, community, barterability, yes. wealth preservation. Please, people, get it done. It's already unfolding. You have Hamza that's living through it in Turkey, and he looks like he's in a, in a reasonably good position. There are a lot of people that aren't. At least he's prepared and preparing even more. Do yourself a favor. Get prepared and keep in mind that shields are made of metal, not paper or promises. And please be safe out there. Until the next time, bye-bye.